Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director, and I'm here with Bible teacher Ben Stewart, who just brought a sermon on the importance of our roles in families. Welcome, Ben. Thank you. Well, so good to have you back. Thanks. Get good to the be here. update, hear how you're doing. Yeah. Um, right. And what a great message that you shared with us today around the roles that God puts us in to live out our call of discipleship and yeah. those relationships in our families. Yeah. Uh, we did have some questions come in. Okay. Um, so sure. I'm just going to jump right into them. The first question uh, says, Ben, thank you for this message. And in their family, uh, they have uh, a child or a daughter who um, they don't have a great relationship with, uh, shows a little bit of a disrespectful attitude towards them when they uh, try. Besides praying for them, encouraging them, what, what else can they do to try to reach this daughter? Yeah. Um, I'm assuming you mean an adult mm -hmm. daughter, adult. like mm -hmm. out of the home. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause there would be a different set of answers if they were in the home. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about, um, like a thirties yep, with kid, their own family. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, it's one of those tricky things. I think you do have to pray a lot about wisdom. This is that area of wisdom where you go, there's not the black or white, right or wrong. Wisdom is understanding the terrain and how do we navigate it. Because there's some people that you would say, well, you should call them. But there are other people that are saying, given the nature of y'all's relationship, a call would actually not be the best thing. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of this will probably go to, it will be really beneficial to have some people that know you really well that can advise you. Because maybe they can see some things in your life you can't see. Um, I saw this, uh, you know, reading through Hebrews, let us encourage one another as long as it's called today, that we may not be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. What's fascinating about that text is he's saying the way sin works is it deceives you so you can't see how it's affecting you. So the context is let us encourage each other. And so I need someone else to tell me what I don't see about the way I treat people. So I had a conversation with someone the other day with an adult child that's disrespectful. And they're like, can you help me? And I just told him, I know your heart, but let me just tell you, I listened to your phone call with him and you over, you correct him a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, and you come, you, you interrupt every sentence with like, um, I, I've never seen anything like it, quite honestly. And he was just like, wow, I didn't know that. And I'm like, yeah, it's, I know your heart in it, but I, I, I'm not saying it's the reason your son's this way, but, um, I think I was help, able to help mirror to him mm -hmm. some, some of the, his behavior. So I would say getting some good people around you that know you really well can mirror your behavior for you. That was a long way to say a s small point. But then beyond that, I would say praying a lot about there is a boundary between my role and theirs, and I can't make up their part. Mm -hmm. So I can do on my part what I can do to say uh, I'm sorry for the things that I've done wrong and being specific. I'm sorry for that I didn't do this or that. Um, celebrating the things that you like. I'm seeing you do this as a parent. I think that's really great. Mm -hmm. Celebrating everything in their life you can. That warmth may warm up their side, but mm -hmm. there's also that understanding of going, I can't do their part. And the more I try to do that, the more I will push them away. So I wish I could give more direct that's counsel, good. but it's tricky. That's good. Um, so this question came up actually several in several ways and, and several times. And um, so when we talk about the chaos and the brokenness that ensues in family, inevitably abuse is one of the things that experience yeah. in a broken family and broken relationships. And so we had questions come in around um, how do we handle and honor and do these things if there's been maybe verbal abuse or physical yeah. abuse or um, emotional type abuse, um, yeah. how, how do we still honor our parents yeah. in that? Yeah, well, again, there's a lot of specific nuance to it, but the framework that helps me 
is to think in terms of that Genesis mandate. That's why I wanted to go back to that. Is we're meant to control what we can control to create an environment conducive to flourishing under God. So I have to do my role as um, a child of parents to, to create a context that we can all flourish under God. But that flourish under God is the operative thing. That doesn't mean doing everything you want. Sometimes what's best for you to flourish under God is not to give you everything you want, you know? And so uh, that's where the nature of a lot of disagreements can happen is you go, if your home is not a safe place to bring my children because it's not loving to bring them into that environment. Well, creating a context where every people, every person can flourish under God means I don't take my children there. That may frustrate you. So what do I do with you? Do I lie to you, put you off, yell at you? No, I, maybe the most courageous thing to do is to speak the truth to you and say, here's why. And I don't want this to be true. I want a relationship with you, but part of the consequences of these behaviors is this decision on my side. But spoken in a context where I want a redemptive story for you, I want to see you win, I want to see you grow and be all that you're meant to be under God. Now, finding that boundary line is the art in all this. And that's where I think, especially in abusive environments, sometimes you're not the objective person that can see that. Yeah. That's why for me, um, I realized I'm not being the objective person as I'm dealing with my family issues. I got to phone a friend mm -hmm. that has been a counselor to me. Mm -hmm. And I had to... Or counseling. And then I got yeah. into counseling. Yeah. yeah, for that reason. And I think it was going through counseling that helped me um, see myself in the equation and see where I was doing things that weren't helpful mm -hmm. and what were the healthiest things I could do. Mm -hmm. And so I would advise counseling if you're in an abusive environment because that will make you the healthiest you in that environment. You don't help them by joining their crazy. Mm -hmm. This may be a short way to say it. No, that's good. I yeah. think that's really good. Um, and so uh, this question came in that said, I wish that I had heard this message years ago when my parents were still alive mm -hmm. um, and can see how this could be applicable to other parts of our lives. How would you suggest specifically applying the lessons of today to those who uh, don't have parents still alive or with them um, or don't have children? Yeah. Well, I would say, um, yeah, a lot of the application of this talk was about your nuclear family of origin, but families are the building blocks of a society. And so you look at like our country, and I can't remember the exact percentage now, but it's somewhere around, I think, 40% of children are growing up without one or both parents in the home. And you look as a society and you just have a lot of hurting families, a lot of families that are experiencing limitation or loss in different areas. And I would say, okay, you start with the nuclear family as it functions in a larger society. So if you're going, there's no one in this circle, well then the next natural circle is for you to look around and go, in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. in my community, in, in my small group, in my city, mm -hmm. uh, where am I seeing need that I have the ability to leverage my life to help? You know, mm -hmm. so in the early church, Roman citizens would often dump baby girls because they weren't seen as valuable. The Christian community would care for those baby girls. Not in my circle, but they're in the water circle of our society. And so we have an obligation to that child in the image of God. Mm -hmm. And so I would say, begin to pray. Is there a widow in your neighborhood? Because mm -hmm. that's where Paul will go in First Timothy. They need parents yeah. or they need their children to take care of them. Mm -hmm. If they don't have children that can do that, it falls on us as the mm -hmm. church family. So there are aging people in our church family that could use you. My sister has helped walk people to death's door that were elderly and had no family. I mean, it's amazing. She, she had no official responsibility to do that, but she did under God. And there may be some single parent homes that really need your help. Or, so I would say, parent us, hmm. love that's, us. That's really good. Yeah. Um, this message today, I think what you're saying is so applicable because as we see more broken families, more families that aren't the nucleus, the body of Christ can come around those families and Absolutely. be 
fathers to the fatherless Absolutely. and uh, care for the widow. And so um, wherever you are, whatever life stage you're in, wherever your parents are, your children are single, there this is for all of us yes. to do. Um, yeah. So thank you for that today. Absolutely. And we're so glad to have you back. Thanks. We'll see you again <laughs> in the summer. Be we'll be ready for summer. another yeah. update. Right. And thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.